All right, what's up, Blender Savages? So today we'll make a path animation. We'll have an object, and we'll have it follow a path, as you can see here. Roller coaster ride. All right, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, get rid of my cube right here. Delete key, there we go. And I'm gonna bring in a mesh curve. So I'm gonna have an object follow a curve right here. Sorry, not a mesh curve, just a curve, a Bezier curve. So here's mesh, and here's curve. So I'm gonna go down here to curve. And Bezier, there's a circle, so it goes a complete circle, a path, straight line you can draw. We'll go with Bezier right here. So there it is, let me zoom into it. There it is, looks like a little uh, eyelash there, a little hair. If I hit one for front view or three for right view, it might be hard to see, because it's very thin. It's flat, so seven for top view, that's your best bet right there. So I'm gonna rotate this. So as you can see here, it's kind of along the X axis. I wanted to go along the Y axis. So I'm in R for rotate, and just point it out that way. All right, so I'll also type in 90 minus, and there we go. And I want to have more curve here. I can scale this up. It'll be the same shape, but I want to add more to it. Just like mesh, I can add, I can extrude from it. So I'm with the tab key, take it to edit mode. Here we go. And I can extrude additional curves. There's our original curve. And these right here are similar vector handles. This one here is your center uh, handle, uh, center point, And this one's your, your handle right here. I can hit G for grab and move that, select it, G for grab. Select the center one, moves the whole thing. Select the side ones, and you can pull it inward or outward. Okay. Similar to vector graphics. But if you want to extrude more, you're gonna to want to start from the center one right there. And you uh, go up this way on the minus Y. I made E to extrude, and just pull out another curve right there. See, if I wanted to uh, make it curvy as well, I can also rotate it, just like mesh, R for rotate. See, there we go. E to extrude. Left click, E to extrude, left click, there we go. And uh, in between these two points, the longer it is, the faster it'll move, because that's what we try to cover that within a certain amount of frames. E to extrude, put it away out there somewhere. R for rotate, let's see. As for scale, pull it out some more. There we go. So as you can see, I can rotate it, scale it, and extrude it. And I can even uh, pull it up here along the Z axis as well, GZ. I'll have it go up a bit in GY, GZ. There you go, there's my curve. So now it's easier to see from all the different angles as well, different axes. All right, back to uh, object mode, tap key for object mode. I was in edit mode to edit. And what I want to follow this path is a, a spaceship. So I have a Millennium Falcon right here. Fillenium Falcon, I'm sorry, it's the Fillenium Falcon or the Fillenium Falcon, Fillenium Falcon. You can download this at thingiverse.com. I just did a search for um, spaceship. This was one of the results here. I clicked the download. And when you get stuff from Thingiverse, most of it, it's gonna come in a zip folder. So you're gonna have to extract that. So I'm gonna click here on, a, I just opened that folder and I can't use these. I have to extract it, extract all, it's compressed files, so gotta uncompress it. I'm gonna put it on the desktop for now so I can easily find it later. And then extract. And I got some stuff on the desktop, uh, the same file in there already, so I'll just replace the existing files there. And then it'll show me here that it's loaded. Cool, there it is, close that out. Back over to Blender. I'm gonna bring in this file, it's an STL file. So I have to go to File, Import, that's an STL. Uh, Thingiverse also hosts the OBJ files, so that'd be that one, OBJ. But most of them there are STL. So I'm gonna click on STL, and then back over to desktop. Wait for it to load, and then uh, I'm gonna double click it in. So here it is, it was in a folder called files on my desktop. And uh, it's this one right here, double click that in. And there it is, humongous, let me zoom out. All right, so relatively large compared to my uh, my curve there. I just zoomed out, spun the wheel, position the mouse away from it, hit S for scale, and then move the mouse inward, or you can try S, point one enter, bring it down a 10th of that original size. All right, looks like a better size there. All right, so I scaled down my Millennium Falcon here. Now when I rotate it so it's uh, flat, so it's not pointing up, because if I animate it like this, it's just gonna kind of hover around there and have to make some other changes. So RX 90, then minus, and there we go. So I got it there. And I wanna put it back here somewhere. But first, I'm gonna do something else. All right, so I just rotated my, my Millennium Falcon here. And I want to uh, let Blender know these changes that I've made. I don't want it to uh, confuse it later when I try to make it go to the curve. So 
Well, this step is very important for you to make it easier to uh, manipulate your object with the curve. So have your object selected there, that's gonna jump on the path. Then hit Control A, select all transforms. There we go, and that'll update it so that it'll respect that rotation you just did or the scaling and the other changes you did. All right, so right now the origin for my Million Falcon is right here behind it. I wanna put it in the center of it somewhere. So I'm gonna right click it, select set origin, go to origin, center of mass by volume. It'll put it in a good center spot. There it is, center-ish. So it's not uh, exactly there, it's because um, it's by mass. So this right here pulled it up to the right a little bit. And then for the curve, it has a pivot point there, the origin. So let me move the Million Falcon out of the way, GY and select the curve. See, it's right here at the world origin. And I wanna put it back over here. And then later I'm gonna put the Millennium Falcon there. So they gotta meet up. They gotta start at the same spot. So let's put this over here. So select your curve, tab key, and select this point down here at the end where your curve would start your path. So this is a point A at the beginning for my animation. So select that point and hit Shift S. Use up the SAT menu. I select Cursor to select it. It'll move that Cursor over here. There it is. So move the Cursor down over there. Tab key. Uh, my origin is still there, but now with the cursor there, I can use that to move the origin down there. So my curve is still selected. I'm over at object mode. I'm going to right click my curve, set origin to 3D cursor, and it's going to move that 3D cursor over here. So origin, 3D cursor, bam. So now it's over there. There's my origin, my pivot point, starting point there. And now I want to put the Millennium Falcon over there too. So I already have the uh, 3D cursor there, kind of like a guide. So I'll have it jump over there as well. So select the Millennium Falcon, your spaceship. Shift S, selection to cursor. Bam. So I got the selection there at that cursor. All right. So now to get it on the curve. Set for top view. Oh, the view doesn't really matter. But there I got my ship selected. Now I'm going to go over here to the properties panel. Select constraints. The one right here that looks like uh, two gears with the band right there. Click that one. Bam. All right. That's constraints in the properties panel. And then make sure you're doing this with your spaceship selected. Add object constraint and follow path over here in the right column, third from bottom, right column. Follow path, all right. And then target, that's the path that's gonna follow. And right now, the only path I have there, the only thing that could go in there right now is that Bezier curve. So click in there, and there's there, there it is, Bezier curve. If you have multiple curves, you can try to figure out the name of which one you have. Or also you can use the little eyedropper here, the sampler, and, or the pipette, whatever you wanna call it, and sample the curve you wanna use. All right, cool. So our million falcon flipped there a bit, that's okay. Uh, let's activate another tool here to help us uh, reposition our Millennium Falcon. So we're gonna click up here, next to the scene right here looks like a Spartan shield, uh, Greco Roman shield right there, Phalanx. And I click a little arrow next to it. Uh, Cause you click on this one, you might lose some stuff, see? You wanna, oops. You wanna click on the arrow next to the little Chevron, you're gonna activate and move right here. All right. And then, why didn't it come on? Uh, it actually, it is on. I just don't have my, my Millennium Falcon here selected, so I'm gonna click on it. And there it is, see I got these arrows here. So now you kind of tell what is forward, what is back for this. So right here, forward axis, it's gonna be the X axis right here for Millennium Falcon right here, this red one. So I'm gonna click on this X here. It might flip it around. So let's, if this one doesn't work, we'll try the minus. So click on this one first. And are we flipping? Oh, you follow curve. There you go, activate follow curve. All right, that one wasn't it, so let's try minus X. All right, and then up axis is gonna be Z, so there it is Z. Uh, let's try Y this time. There we go, that looks better. So Y axis right there it is. So the Y axis is gonna be the forward uh, type axis. All right, and then for whatever project you bring in, you just have to play around with these until you get one that seems to follow the curve. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, but I don't think that's gonna animate it. So if you wanna know if it animates it, Click on Enemy Path, then hit the Play button, see if it moves. See, so the Z1 didn't work, it's gonna be the Y. There it is, bam. And wait for it to loop all the way around, because right now it's only 100 frames. There it is, following the path, all right. Taking off into space. All right, so notice it does stop at 100 frames. 100 and an end of animation. So to add more frames to this, or reduce frames, let me make it a little wider. What you're gonna to have to do is select your curve and then a properties panel, click on this curve icon right here. This is for curve data. So whatever object you have, um, the symbol there will be green and it'll be data for that symbol. So, so if I select my mesh object here, it'll be a mesh symbol. 
uh, select my camera, it'll be a camera symbol. And if I select my light, it'll be the light symbol. So it's data for whatever you have selected. So that's the symbol for curves. And you're going to go over here to path animation. Do not remove that check mark. You're going to open it. You can click on path animation or the little carrot right here, little arrow, expand icon. But don't click on this one. It's going to lose your animation. So leave that one active. So here's a frame count, 100 frames. So I want this to last all 250 frames, 250 enter. There we go. So now hit the play button. See, it's a little slower now, though, because that, um, instead of having to cover all these in 100 frames, now it has more frames to cover the, the span of this. See, there it is. And even though I've already paired it, I can still make this uh, longer. I'm going to select my curve here. Tap key for edit mode 7 for top view. Select this frame here. E to extrude. And just put it way out there. Like it's taken off warp speed or something. Maybe something like that. All right. So let's check that out. Tab key, back to object mode, play button. All right, so you just got to position your camera. The view from like right here, the control turn to zero. There we go. Uh, as you can see there, I can't see that far. Let me select my camera here. G, Z, Z. Move the mouse forward, inward to zoom in. All right. Uh, if you're curious how I selected the camera, I just clicked on the frame right here. See there it is, unselected. Just click on that outline, dotted line, and the camera selected. You can also select it from the uh, outliner. All right. So uh, maybe there's more out there that I can't see. So just in case, have your camera selected and select camera data right here in the properties panel. And right here it says clip start and end. And that's how far I can see where it clips off. I can hold down the left mouse button in there and drag over to the right. There you go. See, there were still more there that I couldn't see. Or you can just type in a number in there. So I'm going to type in 50,000 just to be safe. Five, zero, one, two, three. There you go. And that's as far as my camera can see. That's when I have it play. I'll see it go all the way up there into a completion. So if I had a lower number, it would kind of dis disappear into this gray space that I couldn't see. Let me bring it down to 100. Then it's going to disappear from there. And the uh, you'll see the timeline cursor will continue to play. There you go. So that might happen to you. So just jack it up to a really high number. It also depends on the size of your curve, size of your objects, uh, whatever it's relative to. All right. And uh, I'm going to save this project. Uh, first, I guess I'll just start rendering. Pause it. And go over here to the render tab. And I don't know if these are necessary. I should actually go right here to the render first, see how it looks like. See if I can see it in there. Yeah, I can barely see it. It's dark in there. So let me uh, play around with my light source here. G for grab, put it up here, light, and try sun. Cool, lights it up a lot. So let's cut this down to 500. So depending on whatever you're animating, uh, your settings might be different, might not be as high as mine. And there it is, so it lights it up uh, pretty decent. So let me try 200 for the sun, not as bright. And I didn't color my Millennium Falcon. It's the default mesh color. It's so brought it in as an SEL file, but you can color whatever object you bring in. All right, let me hit F12 just one time so I can render one image, see how it looks there. All right, not bad. I can't tell what it is, but there it is. You can actually pair the camera to the curve as well in order to follow it, but then you're not really going to tell what's going on because you need something to reference to move in the background. So you can bring an HDRI file, but to be fair, these uh, little curves here, that could be nauseating. They're going to be quick turns. All right, again, just zoom in more as well. G, Z, Z. We'll start like right there. And the million falcon will pop up later. G for grab, pull it down. Go to frame one. S, Z, Z. Oops. S, Z, Z. Sorry, not S. G, Z, Z. That's what's going on. Let's go like right there. And then GZ, pull it down. There we go. That looks a little better. So at least you can see it there at the beginning. And then watch it take off. There, I think it's a way better view. Star Wars music. Cue Star Wars music. All right, there we go. All right. And I can see the whole animation there. Activate ambient occlusion. Bloom, give us some glow. Motion blur. Maybe a little too much glow. Can reduce the sun here. Or I can click on Millennium Falcon, add a material, 
new and reduce the specular all the way down make it a little rougher a great color and reduce roughness there actually increase the roughness make it a little rougher sheen tint uh tint i don't need that all right f12 cool not bad all right so i'm back over here to the output and change png to avi jpeg so i can get a video and I click on this folder here and choose or I just click on the folder there and I can save it on the desktop give it a name uh, ship blasting into space and go accept I hit control F12 to render or I can go up here render and render animation and wait patiently for my animation to render all right so there you have it taken out Oh, 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 hidden corners. And then up into space. All right, thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, please leave a like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, uh, share, anything helps. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.